Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is TBR Schmidt and this is my wife Samantha. Hello. And today we are watching episodes one and two of season three of The Sopranos. What do you think of season two? Incredible, somehow even better than the first season. Yeah, I think I would agree with that. Yeah, so I'm so excited to get into season three. Yeah, I mean, we're lucky that uh, we can just jump straight into it and that's exactly what we're gonna do. Yeah. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction for this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you would like to interact with us on our Twitch, Instagram, or Twitter, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, let's get into the episodes. like a complex. I never really looked at it that way, but all those lights and everything. Oh. It's like a prison complex or something. I think these driveway walks are never good. Right? Isn't this how like season two started? Ye I think so. And it was like Sal or Pussy who was in the car. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think this is how every season starts. Got some violence brewing. I wonder who's competing. I think the family was relieved he got taken out. Really? Hey, wait up. Good job, Tony. Didn't didn't respond to that. Crucial to the Webistic stock fraud case. The airline tickets. Especially if the mother testifies. Whose own mother's gonna testify against him? Olivia. The basement has these noisy AC ducts, and he feels it's safe. Well, I think it won't be going <laughs> forward. The listening device will be fabricated, and we will re-enter to install it. Isn't he going to be suspicious if they go into the basement twice? Probably. Hopefully Tony's smart enough. Oh. They're not going in as the FBI. But this is just general surveillance or something? No, I think they're going to go in to find out where to drop it. Be right back. You don't got to follow me like yesterday. All right? <laughs> 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 She's gone from the house from 1 till about 2.45. Usually have a picnic lunch. He's applying for citizenship, too. Hopefully they don't get to the to the maid and stuff. As long as we have somebody on her during tennis and on the maid and Tony. <laughs> She's 45 minutes away via the GW. Put somebody on her. Uh oh. Oh, I thought they were going to not. I thought the same. Yeah. This is pretty complex. Yeah. There's a lot of ways that this could get screwed up. Oh, yeah. Hopefully Tony's just sitting there in the basement waiting for him. <laughs> All right. One down. He gets so much older every season. <laughs> Tony. There's Tony. You know the two you got bottom thing had your way. Oh, I was hoping it wasn't Tony. <laughs> Such different car rides. Wonder if she'll notice. Or if they already know. That'd be pretty funny. College student. <laughs> you have one hour and thirty minutes. Roger control. They might get away with it, unless Furio's there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy that they would have the house empty at any point. Yeah, I guess now we know when we start a crime family, keep someone home at all times. Song. Another fur coat? Yeah, some time for lunch. Yeah, set a plate. You got it. Nope, there's yeah, Furio. Damn. Wanted? And reinforce the hem. Shouldn't have torn like that. <laughs> <laughs> Even if the lace is dry, bacteria and virus migrate from the solar. You see this on TV? That's good. You should be uh, hygienic. You look at ladies, Johns. You could eat maple warm and ice cream from the toilets. <laughs> and they can pour all the fucking ice they want down there, my friend. It does nothing to kill germs. Why do they put ice in there? I'm disabling the line to the phone company. Pick it, Wilson. He has no security. Are they just... Cut off the security. Come on, Tony. I hope you're prepared for this. My brother was never a heavy guy with anybody. Brother was your twin brother, Philly. <laughs> Here <laughs> he just got it. Somebody whacked a kid. A couple months before you came over. You big mouth. Oh. Oh. Tony whacked the kid. There's a twin bond. Maybe it sounds fucking crazy to you. Hey, nothing sounds crazy anymore. <clears throat> it's over, right? Damn, just sitting next to him after they killed his brother? Die within a couple of days of each other? That would have been okay with me, believe me. Oh, hey, look at <laughs> Leave the morbid shit back at Junior's crew and uh, have a happy birthday. How's it look? 
Does he know? <laughs> he was looking at the guy like he knew. My friend I was telling you about, Adriana Laserva. Delighted to teach any pal of Karm's. My most disciplined student. What do you mean by that? I, uh, I have to apologize, Karm. I thought I called everybody, but I'm not going to be teaching here anymore. Will they go home? We're moving. I didn't even know you were married. Yeah. Wasted all this time. Kierkegaard here is taking over for me. How wonderful. So I guess the key is just to get Adriana to distract every FBI guy. <laughs> oh. Uh oh. Yeah, they did school. Baby Bing is leaving school property. I'm on it. Hey, kids! Mr. Les almost stole my board in my locker. What are you doing, AJ? All right, hit it! Damn, how many AC units does he have? You went out for JV ball? Yeah, remind me not to visit you in the hospital. Okay. Well, what position? Douchebag. <laughs> I thought they were only supposed to be in the basement. Right? On VHS. Someone get home. Boom, boom. Any When did you have your last cocktail? <laughs> 11.30 this morning. Jesus, Caitlin. Oh, they're going back to sleep. I like how it was nothing but... Sirens going on in the background. New York. <laughs> Who wrote the Star Spangled Banner? Martin Luther King. Stash you. A Jebi Razem just lunch. This is Razem Stakke. Mushish be stucky or. I don't think anybody's coming home. No, I'm losing faith. I was an engineer with 20 employees. Yeah. Run from the state to do autonomous research. Go from engineer to a. Driving a cab? <laughs> She's probably not getting paid enough anyway, so go ahead and take some stuff. That's just for Anthony Jr. <laughs> Looks like they're expecting World War III. If they're already home, then it's done. Or they're not home, but oh, back in the office. It? Yeah. That baby's gonna blow. Uh oh. Six months left to go on that lining. Oh, shit. Okay. Now you see that lamp there? Shoot, so they were successful so far. They gotta get back in though. The wise guys stand and talk where the air conditioning is loudest. That's where we're gonna place it. Oh my god. I thought he was just building a replica to show like where it's gonna fit. Oh but no. They're literally replacing the whole lamp. Yeah. From that crappy photo. Seriously. When's this puppy going in? Tomorrow. How are they getting everyone back out of the house again? They or might. do you think it's been a week? It's the same schedule. It's probably the same schedule, but it might be different now if, let's say, Meadow is homesick or the tennis lessons are now canceled or something. Or the kids go home. Yeah. Mr. Bingo's up early today. He's in the cabin. Copy. I got the handoff. He didn't see them? Literally was out the window. Man, it took me so long until seeing that sign to realize why they were calling them Bing. What'd the sign say? Bada Bing. Like, that's the name of the strip club, oh, I think. Yeah. So it's Big Bing and Little Bing. Joey says lately he's been into the booze very heavy. Damn. Fuck with Patsy, you know we clip spoon. What, that fucking twin telepathy? Don't let us interfere with your golf game. <laughs> well, we brought him over from Junior's crew to keep an eye on him. So that's what we'll keep doing. Okay. Looking right into the eyes of the guy you know. Or did your brother whacked? I feel like some people are way better about talking about things without really talking about things. Yeah. SC team, we got the housekeeper to wait out, then the house is all yours. Where's Carmella? Oh, oh damn it, Carmella. We never saw her leave. Ugh. Fuck. No, that's good. Low to high. Let me work with you here. Carm, you collect. I think someone has a crush on uh, Adriana here. <laughs> More than just the FBI guys. Maid's car still here. She having problems with her uh, husband? I thought they said they saw her leave, no? No, that they that they didn't see her leave. Oh. No more picnics. Yeah. Stand up straight, okay? Okay, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Carmella. I can't do this with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so she's calling Carmella. Yeah. And Carmella doesn't care about tennis anymore. There we go. Get home. She's leaving the court. I'm surprised they noticed that quickly. They were watching Adriana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if they were just watching her and they're like, wait a second, where's Carmella? Darbingo's leaving the thing too. So what did she find at the house that they're all panicking about? 
Well, they never went in because... The maid never yeah. left. That would be suspicious. I know, like peeling out. We'll finish for today here, ladies and gentlemen. Didn't get it today. Ah. Oh, it oh. blew! Ten fucking years he said this fucking thing would last. No way. Told you not to put this shit down. Oh, not the pool table. Never mind that. Save the pictures. <laughs> and they're probably gonna just trash everything in here, like the lamp. The oh. Do we have any idea what went down? No. Plumber's truck went up there. <laughs> Maybe we got a long-term problem. You definitely do. We're heading back to Quantico. We got a job in Denver day after tomorrow. Wow. If only they would have warned him about his plumbing issues. <laughs> the people next door have had some trucks go up there, I think. You know if everything's okay over there? <laughs> as far as I know. Don't ask me any questions. They're in them. Pardon? Uh, nothing. What the hell was that? For this neighborhood, they're a little different, that's all. She literally almost just... Yeah, ooh, someone's got to get taken out. What the hell? <gasps> oh my god. What should we do? There's no way he'll miss. He's drunk. Anyway, I told John, I says, look. Oh my god. Someone please notice something. He's just gonna pee in his pool? I don't understand this at all. Leaving? Are you kidding me? Tony, get some goddamn cameras. A unit saw Ruggiero come back with a flatbed and haul the old one out. That's Mr. Ruggiero's neighborhood. They're gonna put something in the water heater. Ooh, in the new water heater? We've had every one of Tony's phones bugged for four years. But the guy says less than Harpo Marks. Did you not realize that that lamp isn't gonna work anymore? Derbingle has left the building. There's probably nothing in the basement. Yeah. Okay, now Tony sees him. You didn't see the guy with the gun in your backyard. Siren wire's cut. Maybe that uh, drunk guy will come back with the gun while the FBI's in there <laughs> and just cause a scene. Where are you going? I'm going back to work. Oh, what do I do? Happen to be Polish by any chance, would you? Yes. My grandmother is Polish. He's trying to buy as much time as possible. It's locked today. Why is it locked? I was just wondering if I could ask you a few questions about the language school. Sweet mother of Jesus. What is she wearing today? Hi, Abe. Listen to this now. Hi, Abe. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hey, you. Ay, 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 ay. Wow, they got this fixed real quick. Well, and the well, lamp's right fucking the there. It's not under the right duct anymore. Mm. Tony will assume Carmella moved it back, right? Or the maid. If anybody even notices, give an end. Please, someone notice something. Hi, Caitlin. Hi. Uh-oh, what's going on with Caitlin? Everybody just stared straight ahead. New York. You okay? Yeah. Furio's so cool. I know. Oh no, alone with this guy? Where is everybody? Furio, get inside. I like being here. Y you're sure? Yeah. Don't say you're, you're sure if you're not sure. It's so awkward. Yeah. You bought your daughter a nice house, you know, after you came over with us. Wonderful. And your brother put your grief behind you. No, not in the slightest. Let me hear you say it. I put the grief behind me. Don't turn your back to this guy. You got a younger son too, right? You ought to bring him up to the house. You can hang out with AJ. They can go in the pool. Don't want to go in the pool. It's filled with piss. Control, you hearing me? Loud and clear. Leave the factory. Roger that. Who wants to join the football team? Oh, you joined football? Unit 3, we're in. They are relying a lot on the fact that they'll talk in the basement, though. It doesn't happen very frequently. No, but when it does happen, it's Pretty super... Pretty important. So I got a job for you. 
Oh no. Might get a little messy. I understand. Wet work. Who is he talking to? Some system, you know, if it happens again, some PVC shit or something. They're not discussing OC. Two minutes, we're allowed to check back in. Oh man, this is so intense. Back in Wuj, I had grant from the state to do an autonomous research. Look, you got your... <laughs> no one's even listening to him. Wait, what was he researching? Are they gonna catch something else? We gotta open these windows up. <laughs> like he is some criminal or something. Got some Russian girl coming in to take care of my mother. Oh yeah, where'd you find her? Agency. Wait, we already heard this in the beginning of the episode. Yeah. You know, I've had something stuck in my teeth for two days now. Jesus. You gotta use the other floors. God damn it. I think he was telling someone else that in the beginning because that's what got the ball rolling for them. They also had talked about maybe trying to get Liv to flip. So like, what if they try to get to this Russian lady? Right. Well, I think they'll hold the citizenship over their heads. Like, you're not going to become a citizen unless you help out the FBI. Or we can get you citizenship if you help us out. Nobody ever puts it back in the <gasps> Ooh. Is this the uh, violence of the garage con or oh, garbage? Oh, the garbage, yeah. Second firebomb? Ooh. Is that Tony? Yeah. Why is there just... blood? I don't know if it's blood or like marinara sauce. Maybe he passed out from stress again. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Are you all right? Uncle Ben. What happened? Oh. Oh, whoa. Who's that guy? Was that Meadow? Yeah. Meadow and some guy. Maybe she has a boyfriend. We had to drive back here because some schmuck stole the VCR from the common room. Oh, that's cool how she's rewinding also. 40 grand a year to watch old movies? Who's we? Just a friend from class, okay? A boy. How you doing? I appreciate you letting a screen here. And he was not, so I give the nod to William Wellman. What? Yeah, what is he saying? I don't like him. CD and then let's hit the road. I don't know what you're saying, so I'm gonna take it as an offense. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's from something. Are you, uh... A little early to say. What's your background, No. Noah. I'm from Los Angeles. What I mean is, like, we're Italian. Oh, my dad is Jewish and my mother's family is African American. Uh, charcoal briquette, a moulignon. Oh, Tony. You're gonna say how nice it was to meet me. Then you're gonna go drop her off at school and you're gonna say goodbye. Tony. Later, Dad. What the hell? <laughs> that's, that's what <laughs> did it? <laughs> that's what made you pass out? What did he say when he Uncle woke up? Ben? Uncle Ben? Oh, oh my. the rice? I don't got time for these fucking attacks. Oh, it is blood. Oh, good. <laughs> From the glass. You didn't see the way they were looking at each other. You want her to be with him, just keep it up. Yeah. Race card. You're gonna drive her right into his arms. Not if I cut off those fucking arms. <laughs> Let me deal with it if anybody's gonna deal with it. Please. <laughs> Not Tony. One of my sisters ever brought home a fucking butterhead. You know what my old man would do? No one's listening, Tony. Look who comes. Well, actually, I'm standing here in front of you. Was it the new oh, caretaker? But that's the one with one leg, right? Oh, the Russian, it's her roommate. Yeah. I wish the Lord would take me now. Well. Uh, this is interesting. What, are you going to freak out every time I try to do something nice for you? Jesus. I think this is, like, superimposed, like, uh, from past scenes. Oh, yeah. The tickets were stolen. What are you going to say if they put you on a witness stand? I suppose I should have just kept my mouth shut. I mean, considering the tech that they had, that was good. Yeah, that was very impressive, but that's also really sad. It's really sad. What did you say? He was all quiet at Hunter. She thinks he's a snob, and now he's just sitting out in the car. Weren't you supposed to keep your mouth shut, Tony? What's he doing? I don't know. What? Intervention time? Oh, your mother died. Oh. Your kid. I'm sorry, Dad. That your mom died. Me too. I mean, I hated Livia, but that's only because she was amazing. Yeah, she was meant to be hated. Yeah, she was so good in the role. 
What about the cause of death, did they say? My sip stroke. And of course, has bells. I don't know. Just give me the fucking answer so I can write this. <laughs> Miles to go before he sleeps. So he must be far away from his house. The sleep of death. <laughs> He's talking about his own death, which is yet to come, but will come. That's fucked up. That was nice. Yeah. What are you gonna do? I'll call Janice. Oh, maybe we'll have a reunion of the family for the funeral. Tony, no remembrance at all. I don't know, whatever. I'll see you there. I feel like that's a different actress. No, I think that's the same one for the younger sister. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hope we still get more of her, even though she no longer needs to be a caretaker. Прощай, Ливьюшка. Which means what? Goodbye, little Livia. That's so sad. Like, I know we're supposed to hate Livia, but that just makes me so sad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, T. What are you gonna do? You know? At least she didn't suffer. That guy. What do I tell my kids when their own aunt won't even come to a funeral? Take it easy, I'll handle it. When what? She's not coming, Janice. Oh. You're not coming to your mother's fucking funeral? I have very good and valid reasons why I should not present myself. <laughs> it do you good to show up here at this point. <laughs> Nothing to hide. You know they got special rates for family dead. Do they really? All right, fuck it, I'll pay it. Can I bring my fiance? Fuck that. Fiance? I know you think Mars got money buried in the house. Banished into the witness protection program. Right, Janice? Oh. <laughs> A street person. Sorry. Oh, what? You see, you're not the only one with problems. Be there tomorrow. Wow. Oh, so much. I had no idea that airlines have reduced tickets for family deaths. I didn't know that either. I wish you was a wishing well that I could tie a bucket to you and sink you. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. What kind of entertainment is this? His mother died last night. Oh shit. This has got to be such a boring job. It depends what you hear. I don't know how you feel. Oh hey! We've seen him in so many things. He shouldn't suffer. Oh, Ralphie, I, I need to talk to you and uh... Not the basement. Damn it. This might be the first real conversation down here. Oh! Oh. Thank God. Cool. What's the matter with you? Both of you. We the newspapers every fucking week with this shit. Oh, it's like internal? Yeah, it's internal fighting. He knows who's in line for that contract. The next minute he's threatening to go to the EPA, bust us all. He said that? Oh. Uh-oh. Pretty simple request. Stop burning each other's trucks. We also gotta take care of that other guy. Don't worry about it. The boys room behind the stage, they never check in there. You're gonna have a lot of dirt on AJ. <laughs> well, you see, she didn't want any service of any kind. I find that hard to accept. Maybe we'd have a shindig at the house, you know, after. Celebration of life. What, you think we should do something now? <laughs> People can drink, they can eat some gorgonzola, they want to yak about mine, that's their business. She, like, went to, like, party planning mode. Yeah. Oh, Dr. Murphy's back. <laughs> This is gonna be huge. Actually, that's good. It's a relief. You're not saying nothing. You wanna know the truth. You know, everybody else all bullshit. I mean, Dr. Muffy knows how toxic she was for his life. I wished she'd die. Wished. I mean, Dr. Melfi does the, like, quiet thing and just lets him get it all out. <laughs> she might have testified against me, so... Oh, that's true. How do you feel about the fact that your own mother would have testified against you? That fucking demented old bat, that fucking selfish... Miserable cunt. That tried to kill you and almost testified against you? It's a taboo thought, but common. So we're probably done here, right? She's dead. I don't think that should be the end. Tony Soprano's mother's wake is tonight. You need batteries? Let's go right over here to Office Depot. Who the fuck is this guy that he would wear a wire to the wake? I thought this was like the FBI guy. Done it. I'm downstairs. She's really looking for money? Yeah. Maybe it was us kids who were turned into a... Friggin' sour <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. That was the most fun they've ever had with each other. None of my childhood schoolwork or artwork or anything for that matter is here anymore. And nor Barb's. She only saved yours. Wow. It's your baby shoe. Yeah, that's it. Was he the favorite? Sorry. He's disrespectful. Thanks for coming. That was uh, Jackie's son? Jackie's wife? I think so, yeah. This shit I missed the Jets' first home game. <laughs> Jets. Hit me. Hit me. <laughs> Damn, nobody wants to go to this. Yeah. Anything to get through these events. Jeez, people. Going to a funeral high on weed and coke? Hey, hey, Reverend. 
My sympathies, Tony. Man, everyone's showing up. It's all that charcoal broiled meat you people ate. Nobody told us till the 80s. <laughs> I'm hoping that we can use this sad occasion to put bitterness and sore-headed feelings aside. I don't want to add to his stress. <laughs> the kid's been a top fucking earner ever since that rat bastard went in the program. You can't deny it. The garbage. Yeah. Or... Why do you do this to me? Because I'm the boss of this family. You forget. I forget nothing. But this economy is so robust, you get credit for shit you had nothing to do with. Well. <laughs> yeah, not a good start. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. Tony doesn't want any fire. Oof. So that's Ralphie, right? I think that's Ralphie. Did you talk to her? She's sure you said something to him. Beautiful send off the thank you. Come on, FBI. I want to thank you for all you've done for her. If you could just get your stuff out of there by this week, and I think that would be good. What? I'm going to be living at 55 Benedict while we deal with the estate. She's moving back? I guess so. Mom had this kind of extensive record collection. She gave to me those records. Ooh. But those are my mother's records. I feel I have to respect her wishes. Oh, come on. Thanks, Fetlana. They're worth a fortune to the right collector. I will not answer such here. Go talk to Tony. Yeah, I don't think she's listening to Janice at all. After what my son did to you, oh, how can I look you are in the face? Are we resurfacing this? Blame him for setting the fire? Honey, oh. come on, we have people arriving. Let's go. Just bringing back stuff for Artie. Yeah. Somebody should find the winner. They got pistol in the face. Oof. I'm gonna survive this unless you give me 25% of that fucking million dollars. <laughs> Who is that? Who is what? Everyone, Wasn't please, it may I have your attention? Oh, I was not paying attention enough. Did I, I imagine that? Probably not. I was paying attention to Furio. Can all be together and share um, exactly what Tony didn't want to do. God damn it. Please, everyone join us. Janice, you've been back for half an episode and already a pain in the ass. What the fuck did I say? Hmm? Janice, what are you doing? Most of you will probably remember that this was her favorite song. If she starts singing, I'm going to fucking lose it. I hate moments like this. Okay, just play the song. That's fine. Herman? Rapkin? Ugh, calling him out. I guess what struck me most was she didn't mince words. <laughs> okay. It's true. Between brain and mouth, there was no interlocutor. Okay. <laughs> Janice, you didn't like her either. I don't know what you're playing here. If anybody died, I could be sure I'd get a call from Lee letting me know. <laughs> Saved all your childhood schoolwork and varsity leathers and um, none of mine of operas. This is so uncomfortable. You just did. <laughs> Wrap it up, Janice. <laughs> oh. <sighs> I hear she didn't suffer. For that, we can be grateful. Thank you. Something. So they got no proof. They got nothing. <laughs> Where are you going with this, Christopher? Hey. He did not know he was out there. Yep. She's dead. What? Who? He was drinking pretty heavily, too. Dies with her. Oh. Oh, jeez, man. I thought that was a gunshot. Hey, pick that up. Everybody's in there telling stories of her. Artie, don't talk about that. Artie. What I'm saying is... <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You did nothing. No, Artie. This is such a crock of shit. Carmella. Evading and smiling, passing out cheese puffs. Being robotic. I'm leaving. Let her talk, goddammit. Get down! No, I'll no, speak if I want. God damn it! who are you? Damn. No, don't hand me that. Bullshit! Go off, man. You wanted it, you got it. Here, here. Ooh. She didn't want a remembrance of any kind. Why? Because she's horrible. She didn't think anybody would come. She knew there was a problem. All right, next. Come on, this is good. <laughs> um, there's, uh, desserts in the dining room. I knew my baby would come home. I don't know this movie, but it doesn't seem like it's going to end well. What the fuck? Uh, uh he's dead? Maybe don't be so happy. 
Damn. That was dark. All right. That was episode one and two of season three of The Sopranos. What'd you think? Great start to the season. Yeah. So we filmed this a couple days ago. Yeah, ran out of time, couldn't do the outro discussion. Yeah. So we took some notes and we're coming back to finish the job. Yeah, so that's why we're in different clothing. <laughs> but fantastic couple of episodes. I was so stressed with this whole wiretapping. These definitely felt like the fastest paced or the most intense start to a season yet. Yeah. Um, that first episode, like you said, that wiretapping scene, will they, won't they? Is anyone gonna catch on? Like how serious is this going to be? The whole episode was so intense. Yeah, and the fact that they brought up the water heater just for it to actually explode yeah. <laughs> um, and ruin their, I guess it didn't ruin their plan. It looked like it was gonna ruin their lamp plan. There were so many like little things that you could think would spoil their plan. Mm -hmm. um, Meadow coming home, you know, kind of her little talk about being homesick. Mm -hmm. AJ ditching school, like maybe he would come home one day. Carmela with the tennis lessons and not having the same teacher and being kind of forgotten about and her wanting to come home. I think Polish maid, I think she's Polish. Yes. And her like fight with her husband. Yeah. Which I'm sure we'll talk about in a little bit, but there was just so much that would make you think, okay, someone's going to catch them. No. It ended up with them successfully planting that lamp yeah the microphone and the lamp they've been listening for like days now thankfully haven't really heard anything yeah but yeah no they're in I, like that's gonna be a stressful thing in the back of our mind until someone finds it yeah or they get in some serious shit or someone does it doesn't necessarily need to be tony but if someone has a conversation next to that thing it's over. Yeah, and it's so funny that you say that because I don't know why, like, I don't think that this would be a storyline, but it just was so funny that they kind of made that small comment about the checking on their papers from Poland. Oh, right, yeah. Um, and then he's clearly, like, extremely intelligent guy. He was working on some crazy stuff. And then he's just kind of like mumbling to himself in the, in the basement. basement. So it's like, wait, is this actually going to turn into something? Yeah. I mean, it can go a bunch of different ways. Again, it could be nothing like this show very clearly gives you stuff that doesn't go anywhere yeah. on purpose, or it could be about himself. Maybe he was doing some crazy shit back in Poland or something, or he's gonna see something that the Sopranos do or something, and he'll just be talking to himself downstairs while he's working away on the water heater. Don't think this show does anything without a very serious intention behind it. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that that could be huge. So I'm very interested to see how that plays out. I love their housekeeper. I think she's great. She's just very like to the point. She puts up with the shit um, to an extent. But the fact that she was like, ah, we're going to steal, like, you know, silverware, <laughs> whatever stuff. It's just funny. And the language classes, the fact that they go on picnics uh, once a week and everything, all cute. But I'm uh, interested to see how it's going to play out. Because I don't think they would have made such a big deal of this, of bringing in her husband, if it wasn't going to be important. No. So... That could be huge. He could be the one who kind of says something he shouldn't or sees something and then says it. It just was crazy that with how careful Tony has been for so long, the fact that the FBI was like, we've had their phones tapped for four years and we have nothing, mm -hmm. that they would have someone not at the house. I guess that's a difficult thing to think about. Like, why would you need someone there 24 seven? But from our perspective, it's like, you idiot, you should have had someone there 24 seven. It is kind of odd though, because at the same time you're like, can you just break into someone's home? Like, is that- The FBI? Yeah. Well, they got a warrant. But don't you need to present that? I mean, yeah, they clearly just... got it approved. Right, it's just, I don't know a lot about the <laughs> FBI, but I'm just saying maybe that's why they didn't have someone there or so whatever, because they, they just like didn't even really think, especially because the FBI, and The Sopranos, like all of it, they've all been so like forward with each other. Right. There's never really been any like sneaking around because 
there's no point. Like they always just know who's watching who and whatever. But I mean, clearly the FBI does want them to slip up. That's the whole point. Right. And Tony is always trying to be extremely careful. But it did surprise me that I'm like, you could just break into somebody's house. Like, yeah, I mean, we're learning a lot for our own crime family. <laughs> Uh, we said that in the reaction that we will have someone there 24 7. yeah but no like you said there's so much familiarity with everything like mm -hmm. when they pass each other and they wave at like the fbi just outside um the fact that they know all of the phones are bugged yeah. like that they'll just walk up to each other like outside of the store like the meat store or whatever butcher and uh, have like uh, <laughs> have a conversation uh like candidly about yeah. sports games and stuff like yeah they're fully aware that they're being watched all of the time. So it's just crazy to think of the mistake of not having someone there 24 seven or the slip up of like not having a very good security system. Primarily the one disgruntled guy who had his brother killed, his twin brother, I think, who literally was feet or yards away from Tony with a gun. Pointed at him. Pointing at him, no one noticing. Like he's in their yard. Yeah. And then has time to fully take a pee in their pool and just leave and no one ever sees him. Except for the FBI. <laughs> the FBI saw him, but. They're like, what do we do? But <laughs> do we step yeah, in? Yeah. <laughs> but no one from Tony's side, like that's, that's not good. The fact that someone could just drunkenly stumble up and get a gun pointed at Tony so easily, that's not good. It definitely seems like a slip up. Um, it seems like maybe Tony's getting too comfortable, which is kind of crazy considering how many people have wanted to kill him yeah. since the show began. But yeah, I mean, that's a really good point. Maybe Tony is just not familiar enough with this much power and responsibility that he's not aware of how much he needs to beef up his own security. Right. So we'll see if that's a storyline going forward because right now people are all around his property without him even knowing at all. Yeah, damn. I, I don't know what the FBI is gonna get or who's gonna be the one to spill the beans, but I think something's gonna come <laughs> of this. And in episode two, we had a pretty big development. Um, we lost Livia. You know, I... Now remember, I think there was a comment after we finished season two mentioning that the actress who plays Livia passed away between season two and three. Yeah. So it makes sense that they would have to address it right. in the show. Um, Livia was just such a huge character. Obviously, we didn't see her as much in season two but the hold that she had over Tony is something that I have never seen before. You could arguably say she has been the show's biggest villain. Yeah. To a certain degree. I mean, mm -hmm. the source of all of, almost all of Tony's issues and mm -hmm. depression and you know, anxiety and passing out and all of that stuff, literally tried to have him killed or was okay with that idea. Planted the seed. Yeah, planted the seed. We saw flashbacks of her uh, when she was younger with Tony, when he was a child, she was always terrible back then, terrible to the husband. Like she was just horrible. And I was extremely vocal about yes. how much I hated her. Yes, you were. But that's the character. Yeah. The actress, Nancy Marchand, I believe that's how you say the last name. Yeah. Phenomenal. I mean, she was amazing. I mean, there's a reason that you can absolutely hate Livia. Yeah. Like if she wasn't playing this character to perfection, you wouldn't feel so strongly right. about her. So obviously phenomenal actress and huge impact on this show. Yeah, a huge impact, a huge loss to the story moving forward. Um, I think they did a great job though, bringing back some old scenes and kind of making it fit into the storyline just enough to set up the passing in the show as well. Mm -hmm. And that led to an incredible funeral scene with a bunch of different emotions. Yeah, I want to say the superimposed Livia, however it was that they did that, that was really good. I mean, I honestly didn't notice until you said anything about it. Yeah. Um, and then you can kind of see kind of more around like the silhouette portion. But damn, like they did a really good job. 
and these episodes are a while ago. I mean, this is like 20 years ago yeah. in terms of just technology. Yeah. And definitely bummed that we won't have Livia moving forward, mm -hmm. but the impact to Sopranos, I mean, infamy. The amount that Livia screwed Tony up <laughs> will live on for oh, the yeah. rest of the series. And it was really interesting to go through the funeral or I guess the ceremony at the house, how Janice was so adamant on having someone say something and all this positivity when, again, she was a horrible character and you see all of the uncomfortable nature of it all and how she was like calling people out specifically to try to say something and people could barely say anything. Janice is really something else and I don't really know why she felt the need to do that. She complained about Livia as much as the next person Yeah. and she really just wanted the house and the money and whatever other stuff that came with Livia's passing. So very odd that she kind of felt the need to get people to speak positively about her. Yeah, but it does seem like we have Janice back now, maybe as a more permanent presence. I thought she was gonna maybe be gone. So did but I. But now she's back looking for the money. She says that she's gonna move into the house again. Mm -hmm. So she might be back for good. Yeah, I'm actually really surprised. I thought she would be gone at the end of season two and we might not see her again, but Damn, Janice is super annoying, so <laughs> if she's back, I mean, obviously it's a good balance for Tony. Yeah, we need people to make Tony's day miserable to keep the momentum of the show going. We yeah. can't just have a happy soprano. Yeah. We also got to see a little bit more of Carmela's parents. And a lot of truth. I mean, they hated her. I mean, she drove a wedge between them and their daughter. Mm -hmm. They were vocal about it and Carmela was not shy about the truth about Livia either. Yeah. If Janice hadn't pulled it out of people, I don't think, I think they would have been playing more on the side of like being polite. Let's just honor her. Let's get through this, whatever. Right. But Janice poked the bear. I mean, her parents did not ease up <laughs> or let their feelings not be known. <laughs> yeah, no, they were vocal about it for sure. Yeah. And Carmela, you know, she was pounding those shots. She had her words in. Yes, she drank a lot. <laughs> So that just ended incredibly awkward. Yeah. Even um, Artie, with the whole passing of Livia, he almost did something. I don't know what he would have done. Maybe just told everyone the truth about the restaurant or something. I think that's what was going to happen. And that was so interesting to see his reaction. I mean, he even said, I think, that the secret dies with her now. Yeah. So it's definitely eating away at him. It is. It's still strange to be upset about that. I definitely thought we were past that. I thought, you know, things have improved now and stuff, but clearly it's been eating away this whole time. Yeah. And this just brought it to the surface and it almost came out. Yeah. I don't really know if anybody there would have cared. Yeah, <laughs> he might have just been talking to deaf ears or something, if that's a saying. Yeah. But still, it might be foreshadowing something in the future where Artie is going to explode at some point. Mm -hmm. We also had some introductions of new characters. The actor uh, Joe Pantaleone, Pant Pantalanio. Pantala Joe Pantalanio. We wrote Joe Pantalanio. We actually just saw him recently in Midnight Run. Yes. Yeah. Coincidence. I think we've seen him before, I believe. He looked very familiar. Like, we have a picture of him pulled up right now and it's probably current, but the younger version of him looks really familiar. I mean, I've definitely seen him in a bunch of other stuff. He was in the Matrix movies also, mm. but we're getting just more characters kind of introduced into season three. Maybe he's a potential new villain. There was already a garbage war going on internally. When they were showing those newspaper clippings, I did not think that was going to be an internal fight. Yeah, they're like burning each other's trucks. Yeah, so that was very interesting, but Ralphie definitely seems like a dark character and he does not seem like he's gonna let up with this garbage war clearly at the end there. So I don't know. I mean, that means he's not listening to Tony oh. and I don't know like how far is he willing to go. He clearly doesn't respect Tony. It kind of feels like a Richie situation. Yeah, no, it could be. Yeah. Where I, I think they were talking about how like quickly he rose up the ranks or something. I think maybe because of Junior. Uh, I could be getting that wrong, but it definitely seems like a character who's going to maybe 
go a little bit above and beyond what he should. Right. And again, just be a thorn in Tony's side. One of the last, I guess, major things, uh, Tony passing out again. Uh, the reason why he passed out, some true colors for Tony. That was a lot. We've heard Tony, the undertones, I would say, of racism. It's interesting because there's so much words and like terminology that I just don't know what the hell they're saying. Was that a slur or is that something negative or racist? Or is that just like, are they just talking about food? Like there's some words that I don't know what the hell they were saying, but this was a very, very clear point to show how Tony feels. Yeah, right out of the gate. <laughs> It's gonna be interesting to see if that's some sort of theme or anything that moves forward with Tony or other members of the mafia or mob. I think this is not the end of that because Meadow's clearly pretty pissed too. I think she put things aside for the moment because of Olivia's death. Yeah. But that has to drive a wedge, at least between him and Meadow. Yeah. But I don't know, I mean, Carmelo is not happy either because Meadow was upset. Right, but it was like, was Carmela unhappy because it upset Meadow and she feels the same way as Tony? She just doesn't want Meadow to be upset or like go about it a different way? A lot of things that I think with Carmela are, she may not 100% agree with Tony, but she lets it happen. Oh yeah. Um, she's kind of like that guilty by association guilty by not stepping in and saying something. I mean, we've seen like the, I guess, hypocrisy of like Carmela being, you know, this, the religious, you know, pure person in the family. Yet when Tony comes home with like a fancy fur coat or something, she's not asking questions where he got that or yeah. anything. She's just, hey, ooh, nice fur coat. I think it was maybe more that it was the way that Tony was doing it, not that he was doing it. It definitely could be. It's hard because there's not a lot of shows like this where the technical like protagonist of the show is a terrible person. <laughs> it's hard to like keep that in mind because you want to root for Tony because he's the main character of the show, but he's awful. He's an awful person. Yeah. Kind of snap you back into place and you're like, oh shit. I think one of the other very clear moments, I think it was the end of season two, the finale of season two, where it was showing all of them kind of like drinking champagne and wine and then it would cut to like all of these disgusting things that were happening mm -hmm. because of who they are and the business that they do. Yeah, the so that was just Yeah, that was just a little like reality check like, hey, remember, these are bad people. Yeah, and I think we, we need it. You need the reality check because it's like we're comparing people that are going after Tony, it's like, oh no, the FBI and whatever, but it's like, hold on. <laughs> right, yeah. You should maybe be rooting for the FBI <laughs> to successfully get that bug in the house, yeah. in the lamp, not being like, no, Tony, catch them. But that's what makes this show amazing. Yeah. You have these incredibly complex, deep characters. They have great moments, they have bad moments, everything else in between. And these were two fantastic episodes to start season three. Strong start to the season. So I'm really excited for what's to come. It just feels like every season is better than the next. Oh yeah. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction for this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on any other types of social media, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, peace everyone. Bye. Bye.